हरि 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 हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स बिलीव इन योर ओन पोटेंशियल हैव फेथ इन योर ओन पोटेंशियल whatever is happening outside even in times where it, everything seems to be insecure you are that you are that essential divinity we have never lost the contact even if in our conscious experience we have forgotten we are not aware of it even if we have sometimes some glimpses then we lose it again but the contact is always there believe in your own potential like that we can also have the strength to take responsibility to our situation of course we can never control all the factors that are involved but how we deal with whatever comes along is one aspect that we can do something about that we can influence whether we meet situations as a victim or as a challenge to learn to grow if there are difficulties the tendency is always to look where where can i get help where can i get support where can i get this where can i get that if it's necessary nothing wrong to connect with somebody who can help with something but foremost first believe in your own potential you are connected with that divinity there is a tremendous strength there of which you are most of the time not aware and out of habit we don't not even consider that it is there so consciously remind yourself <laughs> believe in your own potential have faith in your own potential you are connected with the source of power this brings self confidence self confidence doesn't mean anything egoistic self confidence means the capacity to bring the attention to the present and even in tense situation we are capable to connect and relax because that is the awareness of that tremendous potential there we have not automatically learned to connect with that to have faith in that the way we have been brought up in this world so it's good to remind ourselves to remember it is always there <clears throat> we are not poor little victims at the mercy of every whim of destiny and whatever is happening around us we just experience all that play a role in it but at the same time we have always access to that pure 
divinity. Remember that. Have faith in your own strength. We are capable to do so much more than we are usually believing just out of habit of always thinking of our limitations. On the physical level, there are limitations. On the energetic level, on the mental level, there are limitations. But you, in your essence, you are limitless. And you have access to that. And the more we are connecting with that, the more we can bring that creative, beautiful energy of life in the present situation. If that self-confidence is there, everything becomes so much easier. If we are always thinking we are a poor little victim of the circumstances of whatever is happening, then everything becomes so heavy and painful. There's no end to that. It need not be like this. You are prior to the experience. Connect with that. And then the experience changes all the time. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's sad, sometimes it's happy, sometimes it's miserable. <laughs> but you are not miserable. Being connected consciously with that potential gives us also much more strength and capacity to let that energy flow into the manifestation. And really often help change situations to something more positive, something more harmonious, something more beautiful. It's good to start our day by remembering. My essence is that divinity. I have always access to that. That gives a tremendous potential. If we live our life in spite of all kinds of funny things happening in the world, then we can live our life joyously, playfully, and contribute something to give the possibility that also externally things can change to the better. Okay, I leave this and then I come to a question. <laughs> Last time, with Leora, we have been talking about memory and there was a message. And I thought that person had also asked about memory and I went on talking about memory. <laughs> and only after the satsang, I, I, so I read it false. It was, the question is, was how to deal with money, <laughs> how to deal with money. <clears throat> money is only, it doesn't really have any value in itself. It's a symbolic value for, for whatever is out there in manifestation. It's only the value we give it. And in the present situation, we need some money in order to buy food and clothes, to be capable to live somewhere, have a shelter. <laughs> but it's being taken much too serious. 
we can do behave in a way reasonably with common sense to get our money that we need. Sometimes we get more, sometimes we get less. If we have less, then we can buy less things. So what? If we have more, we can buy more things. <laughs> Doesn't make us not necessarily more happy. So as a general rule, let's not take it so serious. Deal with it with common sense and don't make it into a main importance in our life. It's just a way how to deal with this level, this material level, you or prior to that, knowing that then we can go about it playfully and then accept how the circumstance is changing. And I have seen people who are poor, they were quite happily doing their, their daily stuff. They were, they were loving, joyful. I've seen people poor, they were complaining all the time and feeling miserable about it. It's then in their mindset whether they can be happy or not happy. I've seen many people who have lots of money who are miserable because they make themselves miserable. Doesn't change necessarily. I mean, it's nice if we have enough that we can feed ourselves, <laughs> that we can sleep somewhere, sheltered. When we were first in the ashram with Amma, we were living an extremely frugal life. It didn't take away anything of our quality of life experience. <laughs> so whoever has written that, who, the rule of thumb, well, just deal with money relaxedly. Don't dismiss it as something you should not have anything to do with it because you can't avoid it <laughs> on this material level. But don't give it that importance that usually is given. Sometimes it's coming easily and you can have more possibility externally what you're doing. Sometimes it comes not so easily, you have a bit less possibilities what you can do externally, but your well-being, your happiness is not dependent on any of that. It's coming out of yourself. If you are aware of that, if you remind yourself of that, then dealing with money and the whole other material stuff is not really a problem. We just deal with it. As it comes, we deal with it and let it go. Okay, I'm not sticking longer to that subject. And I'm asking you, my friends, is there anybody else who would like to say something? You are welcome to come in. Sixteen. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Leora. Um, okay. I have a question about energies uh, with people. Mm -hmm. Um. Even if um, I like the person and they're kind and uh, um, generous, whatever, 
I wonder if um, there is something like underneath about energies, if the person is maybe bitter or uh, complaining. Maybe it's felt more when I spend time, let's say when I specifically, when I go every now and then to the demonstration, I travel with the, with friends, a couple, and the woman is, is very bitter. She's very kind, but she really like gets down, down on her husband a lot. And uh, like, yeah, she's bitter and she, Somehow it's expressed very uh, clearly. So, um, and I, I feel I'm influenced by that, but I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just influenced by traveling and going to the demonstration, which is not fun for me. And yeah, I don't know, but. I wonder about spending time with people that are that their energy they, that that their them themselves is like are like um, very unhappy or bitter or yeah yes they can still be nice as I said it's important for me to say they can still be kind and nice and generous but inside they are like um, as I said yeah. Yes. Essentially, you are pure energy. <laughs> and that uh, is only creative, beautiful, expansive. But then as a manifestation, we filter that energy through a whole set of habits and conditionings then how that man energy is manifesting, then uh, that has, of course, its own flavor. And of course, we do, on that man manifested level, influence each other. When there are a few people in a room, there is a certain energy building from that group. If another person comes and joins, immediately the energy field changes a little and adjusts to that energy that is coming in. And then if somebody feels not happy, then of course that's quite energetically always a little attack <laughs> to us. But if we are aware of that, then we can learn uh, to accept that it is like this and well center and brief and relax. And then we are not being influenced in the sense that we are not being drained or getting more and more sucked also in a negative state of mind. But uh, then we see, okay, that influence is there, but the more you are relaxed about it, uh, the more you become transparent that it's not having a deeper influence. You are still aware for, we can't mm -hmm. avoid, when we are physically close to somebody, then we can't avoid. We are in each other's energy field. So we, but mm. if you are strong in yourself and you are radiating your energy, a positive energy, then you are more influencing the others in a positive way. <laughs> so yeah. it's not so much that you have to learn to shield yourself all the time when you are with people, but more to become transparent, even if there is negative energy because of gloominess, of bitterness, of depressive energy, that uh, it's not pulling your experience into that more darker space, but that you can bring light into it and then maybe you can even help to lift the other person a bit out of it. Oh. Yeah, so in I often choose recently, I often choose actually not to to not be with um actually I spend so much time alone recently mm. and most of the time I enjoy my own uh, company and like uh, I'm relaxed and uh, and I I'm happy. 
or less happy, but I'm okay. And they notice that I choose actually to to not to not be with the people that their energy is um, not um, supporting my well being. I would say, yeah. Um, which is okay, what is okay actually to do. I. I understand what you say about centering. I should give it more uh, emphasis. I would say, I, I, yeah. But also, maybe I should accept that sometimes, if let's say I want to go to demonstration every now and then, then there is a price. Um, because the going there, coming back. Being on the road all together is no fun for me. Mm. Um, and yeah, sometimes we have to do things we don't want to do, but we have to do them. Like if I have to travel to travel to the city and for medical reasons or whatever, then I there is a lot of energy around, and the, sometimes it's difficult to remember to stay aligned and uh, yeah but as you say just to notice it and be aware and then I know I can rest come back home and eat and rest and uh, takes time to readjust to come back yeah to relax and yeah sure it's easier in in pleasant circumstances than in tense circumstances to remember <laughs> yeah and as yeah. long as we don't remember, we cannot really do anything. But basically, if you have that intent, then the memory will come back again and again. And at least at that moment, you step a step back. And at that moment, you center, you connect, you relax. And if you do that, not all the time, but time and again, the whole experience is already very different then if you just completely forget about that and are completely identified and involved with whatever is going on. Yeah. And if we do that, okay. consequently, when we remember, gradually it comes more and more. The, the memory, even in not so easy situations, and then uh, it's getting easier and easier with the time but that you spend a lot of time by yourself and you feel good about it then by all means spend the time with yourself and feel good about it <laughs> but uh, every now and then it will just happen that uh, we are in situations that are very different and it's good at that time to remember to connect and not to get swept away too much but learn to be connected with your own strength as i said in the beginning remember your own potential and then if you connect with that then you still feel the influence of that energy but it won't be able to push your experience into a more negative mood Hopefully, uh, also, it, maybe like on Tuesday, I had an experience. I had to go to to check my eyes and stuff. So and then I I, I accepted. Uh, I had to take the train, and it was very hot. And uh, it's very hot now in Israel. It's yeah, all over the world now. And um. But, and I was nice to myself. I ex I accepted the my my reaction. I wasn't angry. I was upset. I was crying. It was difficult, but uh, fine. Okay. Sometimes it's like that. Nobody was mean to me, or or nobody. Nothing went wrong. But but it, it was difficult. So I reacted. I also think, fine, okay, we react. We are. We can't always. Uh, at least I can't always remain so 
cool and uh, detached somehow. Um, so I accepted my reaction. It was it was okay. Hmm. Then you are also mm -hmm. detached from the reaction. So yes, if it's not something that you after that is worrying you and you think, oh, I shouldn't have, um, I should, then it's not a problem. Yeah. Comes, yeah, yeah, it's okay. there, it goes. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Okay, Werner. Then we leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you for now. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Ario, Ario. Ario, Ario. Ario. Would anybody else like to come in? You're welcome. Hi, Verna. Hello, Ravi. Hi. So, um, yeah, I, the last three weeks, my mind's been um, much busier. Um, and prior, or two weeks, prior to that, I went through a really nice period where I felt very connected. Um, I'm just wondering, and I guess... What in times in life where the mind does get busier for different reasons, it could be because my nervous system, I've overdone it physically with my health and my nervous system is, it could be anything. Is there a, do you need to, does one need to be more, what is the attitude? Does the attitude or the resolve have to intensify or what it's, it just feels so far away from me that sense of being feeling connected when I'm in this space. But I guess part I'm guessing one way I'm my own worst enemy because I'm not pulling myself back out from my thoughts. Anyway, just some guidance in times where you, we move from transit, we transition from spaces where we feel really connected and everything yeah. feels much easier, and then it gets harder. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Basically, we would like that we have like a nice curve and it's slowly getting better and better. And uh, in daily life, usually it's not like this. It's more like uh, going up and down. If you could see an average line, it would maybe be a line like this. But then uh, you, we have a period where everything goes smoothly and harmoniously, effortlessly, and then suddenly it doesn't work like that anymore. And then it's easy to think, what did I do wrong? Why, why, why is it happening? Where is my mistake? And maybe there is no mistake, but it's just not on the program. <laughs> and the best way to deal with it is then to not get thrown into darkness because of that. Okay. My mind is a bit more crazy, a bit more busy. It's a bit more difficult to connect, but I still connect as good as I can. And then you can accept, all right, there was a nicer period. It went smoothly, harmoniously, and now it's a less harmonious period. So I just simply deal with it. You as a being essentially are not affected by it. Remember that. And then that doesn't mean after that you are always capable to bring that inner peace in your experience. But if you remember, then you're getting stronger and stronger in it. And then even not unfavorable periods will affect you less, but still, Sometimes it's easier and sometimes it's more difficult. Huh? She can come, no problem. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Verna. I, I also feel like, um, I, I guess lately also I, I've been, because in these moments, I mean, I also kind of feel like I need to try a bit harder. And that's that's the, as in, you know, like in these, I think, you know, there's probably an element of giving myself a hard time about not feeling so connected. 
Um, and if I kind of let go of that, it, it's okay to just to have to increase my resolve to, because in times like this, I kind of forget to say my mantra or I don't say my mantra. So I guess I need to let go of the subtle bit of me giving myself a hard time about it and just be really focused when I wake up tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, just to say the mantra, come what way as best as I can. Come what may, I mean, yeah. Right, when you catch yourself that there has been again uh, so much time that has gone and I didn't really have a conscious <laughs> connected moment, then don't make it worse by beating yourself up because there you're just going into the story again. Oh, oh, okay, there, but it's already passed. It's not more important. Now you remember, now you connect uh, without telling, oh, I'm no good. And uh, so what did I do all this time that has passed? The past is past. But now you remember, now you connect as good as you can. If you consequently do that like this, then it will come more frequent, even if you have gaps, but if you don't waste your time and energy beating yourself up that you have again uh, missed <laughs> that much time, then you have that energy to go that much deeper. And even if there has been a big gap, then you can connect and you can put the resolve the Sankalpa in the current, okay, I'll try to remember better. I'll remember as good as I can, but not with a negative mood, oh, I'm not good enough and uh, I have wasted all this time. <laughs> Here you are. And if you beat yourself up, then you are wasting your time because you remember and you could do something more useful than <laughs> thinking it was not good what has happened before. Great. Great. Thank you, Werner. You are welcome. Adio. 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 Is there anybody else who would like to? Ah, oh, there is a. Hello. Ah, oh, yes. Adio. Hello, Maria. Hello. <laughs> See you. <laughs> Um, my question, Werner, is about um, all relationships. I'm about to go back to Spain for a few days. Yeah. And there is always, always that comes up. And in my culture, uh, family culture and beyond, it's very natural to go and see old friends. And, yeah. You know, it's very natural. And... I usually, I used to do that a lot, um, but in the last few years, I've given myself a lot more freedom yeah. to decide. I realized recently, because I was invited to some meetings and, and I said, no, that there is resentment, resentment, uh, which rationally is disproportionate. It's very disproportionate because we had a good time. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, in, in the normal way, yeah, years ago, those relationships were the normal way, were really supportive, fun, and so on. But I always felt incomplete, incomplete. I always felt something missing. And it was only until I found this practice meditation I'm doing now in the community where I found that that was for me the true friendship. So in the community, I found a natural friendship, which is very deep and um, very satisfying, even when we go through processes, which we do, of course. But um, yeah, there I don't have any questions yeah. about whether I want to see people or not. Yeah, right. And spend time with them. It's so enriching. So what happens when now I go back is still I have that question and the guilt comes up and and one part of myself also starts saying well but you should be fine you know um, like as if I am scared because I am a bit scared of facing um, those situations where old um, patterns may come up that's yeah. true yeah. I am still 
him. And at the same time, I think, well, why do I have to go through that? <laughs> yeah. And like, I am aware. I work with those things in the meditation. I experience many of those things in other environments like work and so on. So it's not that I am really avoiding something that I can't work with mm. without that. So, I mean, if you could comment a bit on that, because my desire is definitely not to have those meetings. Absolutely. <laughs> Your desire is not? Not to have those meetings. I feel ah. I, I would force myself yeah. to yeah. go into those situations. <laughs> At the same time, I don't want to avoid seeing and feeling what I need to feel to heal. Right. But uh, you don't have to push yourself to go into these places and meeting these people simply for the sake of having the confrontation and uh, and having the exercise to deal with it. If you feel it's the right thing to do, even if superficially you don't feel too much of a desire to do so, but uh, deep down you feel it's the right thing to do, then go and go full heartedly without fear. Then, okay, let's see what is happening and deal with it as good as possible. But if you don't have that clear feeling that's the right thing to do simply because you think I should out of uh, so social custom or God knows what, then you better don't go. Except after that, if you have difficulties with your family because of that, then you have to wait to which is the which is the lesser trouble. <laughs> but if you can choose, then to choose that you feel is the right thing to do, not so much what you think uh, you should do. And then if you do that, knowing yes, it feels right, then uh, you won't also know. You will not go with fear. You won't go with fear. Then, okay, there may be all kinds of things happening, but at least I'm going consciously into it and observe. And even if you forget in between, and after that, you come again, become more clear, and then you see, oh, oh, an old pattern got me again. But so what? Now I'm out and see it and detach from it. And then it's not a problem. Thank you. That I feel already. Reality, I don't want those meetings yet. Yeah. And perhaps not even after. Yeah. <laughs> Are you now in uh, Spain? No, no, not yet, not yet. Not yet. I shall be there in a few days. Can I ask you a second question on a very different topic? Yeah. It's about food. I've already mentioned some time back to you that I was feeling that I needed to make some changes. Mm -hmm. And I have gone through some major changes, which feel really good. Uh, I found some kind of Ayurvedic, a bit of Ayurvedic recipes and that uh, feel very nutritious and satisfying. And um, I managed to cut out a lot of sugar, a lot. I mean, mainly chocolate, because that was my sugar thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was in the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> but it feels really healthy to... Because um, now I realized that it was producing acidity in my stomach. That's why I was feeling that I needed some change. Yeah, right. At the beginning of the meditation, mainly, is when I would feel clearly at the top of the stomach acidity. When I had too much chocolate. <laughs> and the chocolate always seemed to compensate for something missing. So anyway, I've introduced a lot of honey and with food, with dressings, with and it's, it's helping a lot. And some other changes. But there are times where I feel because my usual dishes are kind of letting them go. I feel in a no man's land. It's like, I don't know what to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from fruit, which fruit is always clear to me. Yeah. It's a, always a choice. 
Um, but there are, I go through times where I'm not really hungry. And I get quite disoriented. You no. don't feel like eating at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't starve yourself, but if the body tells you to eat less, then maybe you can go through a period where you are eating less and see, see what happens. Sometimes it's good for purification of the system to eat less. So as long as you feel that it's still that you have your vitality, but you feel like eating less than uh, follow the, the body. Now, I guess when you go to Spain and live with your parents, you have to adjust a bit <laughs> with the food. <laughs> yeah, and, and I you, let go, I let go. Yeah, then you need not be uh, afraid of that either. Right. Yeah. It's the, the, the rule of thumb is that we learn to listen to our body. And then we getting guided what is good and what is not good. <laughs> and sometimes we may feel quite hungry with a good appetite in a period and feel it's good to eat well. And then other periods you may feel that it's good to eat less and then you don't have to force yourself to eat more. As long as you can maintain your vitality, then that's fine. Thank you, because this is, a, I've, I've always been very regular for meals. Mm -hmm. I mean, my natural tendency, I have a lot of bata, mm -hmm. uh, your medic. And when I read about it, I, I thought, oh, wow, that's, that's why. I've, I've always felt that these regimented times for eating didn't really suit me. And for a while, I thought that there was something wrong with me, as usual. Because <laughs> everybody <laughs> does the timetable and at home. My father was very, very regular for that. And I thought, well, there is something wrong. But uh, as time go, goes by, I and I give myself more freedom on that, I also feel that what's the problem? You know? Yes. yes. <laughs> what's the problem? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I can eat a lot at 11 in the morning. I mean, not very late. I never feel hungry really late at night. Yeah. But in the middle of the day, it can vary enormously my my eating time. So that helps what you say. I mean, my aim is to come to the point of what I experience sometimes, which is what you say, is that I feel it. I feel the hunger and I feel also the the food. Yes. Like, it has happened to me um, a lot with oranges. Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned something back that some years ago, I started feeling that when I started this uh, shaky meditation, I felt the need for eating oranges a lot. Mm -hmm. And for a long period of time, I ate four, even five oranges a day, which yeah. was very yeah. unusual for me. And it did me a lot of good. Yeah. And yeah. when I touch oranges, it still happens. I feel the salivation yeah. and the like joy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it doesn't happen often with food. It happens sometimes with carrots. So I'm guessing that it, it can it's possible to develop sensitivity in a way that in the touch, the sight, or the, you can sense what is the food that the body is needing. Do you yeah. have experience yeah. with that? Right, right. Uh, so you may sense it, but even if you don't sense it, once you have eaten, then you feel uh, that it's easier to detect the reaction of the body. And if there is something and the body tells you this, I don't like, <laughs> it's no good for me, then it's good to reduce or avoid that. On the other hand, if the, you feel the body feels nourished and light and happy about something, then it, you can very well listen to that. Right. And then you develop also more, more the sensitivity even before you eat it. Okay. Thank you so much, Bana. You're welcome. Thank you. Wish, you. wish you well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I will connect from Spain. Okay, okay. Mario. Adiós. Adiós. <clears throat> Is there anybody else?
who would like to come in? Hi. Hello, Andreas. Hello. Can you explain how like pure consciousness um, turns into sense consciousness? Like the connection between the two of them? Yes. I mean, nobody can explain exactly the mechanism. <laughs> but pure consciousness then manifested through the senses has a certain automatically a certain flavor that the very sense is giving it. It's like your pure light and then you shine it through different colored glasses and then uh, what you see is different colors of light but the, the source is pure light. You cannot exactly explain <laughs> how the pure how the white light is getting colored, but you know, it's because it's going through the, the colored glass after that it's colored. Like you're having a certain instrument, the human body, and there are the subtle senses and the gross senses. There we have the five senses, uh, the most known uh, senses and consciousness shines through and how the senses are being formed and conditioned plus the conditioning of the mind will will simply color our sense perceptions if we had another other sense organ then we may see the world very different <laughs> if we would see uh, more energies than colors, then everything would look would look very different. But since the sense organs are the way they are, we perceive the way as it is. And it's simply through the filter of that instrument that pure consciousness becomes that experience. So it's in it, in the sense consciousness. Yes. Like it's, you say, it's the thing that makes it possible. Yes. The, the thing that makes it possible, it's it's the pure consciousness. And the consciousness in your sense perception is not apart for the, from that pure consciousness. If you follow your sense perceptions back to the root, you are reaching pure consciousness. It's not that there is the pure consciousness and there is another consciousness. It's simply the pure consciousness that is manifested through the sense perception somewhat with a flavor. <laughs> How do I follow it back? By like you taste something and then we can just uh, uh, be there and uh, think, oh, it tastes very good. Oh, I'm enjoying it very much and completely get identified with that I'm the body experience and li uh, like this very much. Or you can Remind yourself, okay, then let me consciously experience that, taste that taste, and you observe it, and then actually automatically your attention is flowing back through the consciousness to its source more and more, and you become aware, okay, it's the same consciousness, it's not too consciousness this. <laughs> it's it's simply the consciousness that has been flavored and you can or you hear something and then instead of getting involved whether you like the sound or don't like the sound but or in analyzing what exactly is it that I'm hearing and doing all the mind games that come along with it you just consciously hear and then observe the hearing process. And when you observe the hearing process, you become aware, oh, it's simply consciousness manifesting as that experience of hearing sounds. <laughs> and you can start with the sound and hearing the sound and observe the process, observe bring the attention really to that experience in the now and then automatically it 
the attention is sinking back towards pure consciousness. Mm -hmm. There was a, a Zen master who was teaching nothing else but uh, telling his disciples to ask the question, what hears? <laughs> who hears? <laughs> Instead of who am I, who hears? <laughs> what hears? And then they were all the time busy, drift consciously hearing, and that very experience of hearing brought them back to the source. <laughs> and so with the other senses, with smell or touch or taste or sight. <laughs> Can you do it with thinking too? Yes, of course. You can think, but then we are usually so absorbed in what we are thinking that we are not even quite aware that we are thinking. <laughs> but then when you become aware, okay, my thoughts go, and then uh, you let them go, but you don't hook into the thoughts so much, but then uh, step a step back and observe, oh, thoughts are just going on. And then observing how the thoughts are arriving and being there a moment and going, you become more and more aware. It's just a wave of energy. It's just a wave of consciousness that manifests momentarily as that thought. The tricky thing with thoughts is that we are so interested in all that stuff that we are thinking. <laughs> Think it's so interesting and then it sucks the attention always along. <laughs> Most of the time it's not really so interesting what we are thinking. <laughs> but it still goes on and on, ramba, ramba, ramba. Most of the time not conscious, but when you become conscious then you need not Try to stop, 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 stop thinking, but okay, thoughts are there. And then you just bring the attention to the experience. You observe simultaneously a thought, the content, but then you observe even what it is doing energetically to you, because every thought in the body is not only consciousness, but it's based on the prana, on energy. And then if you observe the thoughts like this, then your attention is not more running away with it. And if you are not feeding it with interest, then actually they are calming down by themselves. But already while you are thinking, if you turn the attention around, you become aware, okay, it's pure consciousness that is involved. In meditation, I I, I try to just be, like, just be, or, like, rest as awareness. Right. And <laughs> but I'm never sure if I do it right or not. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I, I cannot make a question out of it. Yeah, and there is not really as doing it right or not right. Everybody does it a bit differently. And if you feel that you're resting in awareness, then you're doing it right. <laughs> but if you playing just a mind game and become aware, yes, I'm actually playing mind games, then there you can observe that and let that go and come back to that, which makes the experience, the thinking, the, the sense perceptions, that which makes all this possible. I, I can have a certain amount of awareness and being present, but, but yeah, I, so it takes a long time to deepen it. Like, and mm. if it deepens, then it <laughs> the meditation is almost o over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I never really get like this the feeling like of really staying there in, in like a pure consciousness. At least you're going in the good direction. You cannot really decide how successful that you are. You can just do, make yourself as good as you can, available, that it can happen. <laughs> uh, 
And of course, often it may feel like this, that you sit and you meditate and try, and then finally it feels, ah, now there is some peace, but there the bell rings and you have to get up because you have your duties to do. <laughs> and then don't regret that you cannot sit longer, but be grateful that you have come to that point. And then just in spite of having to get up, go have to go for your duties or do something, then don't think, oh, now it's again, I, I missed it and sort of throw it away, but keep it with you as good as you can when you start to get active. Don't think Sometimes. the meditation is over now, it's impossible, but bring it as good as you can along with it. Hmm. On the weekend, I could meditate for a second period, but I very rarely do it because hmm. there's a feeling that, um, that some part of me doesn't want to do it anymore. And I don't know, sometimes if I press for it, then I, I just get lost in thoughts, but sometimes it works. <laughs> sometimes it works, right. As uh, I told you previous, you have to find for yourself, which is the right, the right balance of pushing yourself a little, but not starting to torture yourself. So if you have a daily one time for sitting and you can do that regularly, that's already great. If you feel adding a second time, you can do uh, as, it, as it is possible with the circumstances and your readiness to do so. But try to bring that meditative attitude more and more also into the activities. <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm really lacking. <laughs> But we can, we can learn and remind ourselves and gradually it's getting easier. Okay. Right. Okay. Hario. 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 Would anybody else like to say something? You're welcome. As I have said many times, it's very, very helpful if we have that possibility, if we have every day some time where we are not busy, where we can put our undivided attention simply, no matter how we are doing, simply in being consciously conscious, consciously alive here now, connect as good as possible. This regular daily period makes us stronger and stronger. But of course, that should inspire us to not forget about it the rest of the time. And we will forget many times. So what? The moment we come back, immediately we connect. As I said in the beginning to Ravi, when he collects himself and becomes aware, oh, so much time has gone, then we can waste a lot of time being sorry about the time has gone and uh, reprimanding ourselves and uh, <clears throat> doing all kinds of emotional stuff, but there actually while doing so, we losing the contact again. So, just have that basic intent that I try to remember, to connect, also in actions, the whole day long, as good as I can, without making it into a new strain, into a new burden, oh, I have a terrible duty to do, I have to connect all the time. <laughs> no. In a joyous, playful way, just intent to connect consciously. We are always connected, but we forget it. We don't have the direct experience, so connect as good as you can. 
at the moment we remember, don't waste time about all the time that has passed where we need not remember that moment, just connect and relax. And more and more we become aware that uh, doing so that is energizing, that brings a vitality, a beauty more and more in our common day-to-day -day life. And then the motivation to do so will also slowly increase, that we don't see it as a burden that we have to do, but rather I want to do it. Because the more we are doing, the more we becoming aware, no matter what. There is always that flow of pure consciousness, that flow of pure energy, that flow of pure love that would like to manifest if we just give it a chance, if we are not so caught up in our story, the details in our, of our story, taking the person so important, feeling sorry for ourselves, all that stuff that feels like we are disconnecting. If we learn to let that go and let our real being flow through, then of course the experience of the day-to-day -day life becomes so much more joyous and fuller. Meditate or do whatever practice you are doing every day for some time where you can put the undivided attention in remembering, in connecting, whenever we become aware we are again flying off, bring it back, connect, relax in that, but then go about the daily activities with the intent to remember as good as you can. And sometimes it's easier, and sometimes it's not so easy. But if we keep going, it becomes easier. It becomes, it should be natural. But we have learned to be unnatural, but by reminding ourselves, it becomes more and more natural to just, in all the situations, to relax again, to connect consciously. The attention is needed somewhere, but then connect again, consciously. The attention is needed somewhere, but then connect again, consciously. <laughs> and more and more, you will be able to keep that conscious connection up, even if the attention is needed somewhere. <clears throat> Then the daily meditation helps to be more alert in the usual active day-to-day -day life. But if you are more alert in the active day-to-day -day life, that helps also the meditation to go deeper, to do help each other on both, both ways. Again, I'm asking, is there anybody else who would like to come in? You're welcome. So I'm coming back to before I have started. Believe in your own potential. You may listen to me and think, yes, that's the, <laughs> this guy is just talking, talking as if it was so easy, but it's not so easy. <laughs> I, I try, but I'm not succeeding. And then there is the habit of a story there, and it's there always, but uh, it's not so easy, and I try, but I'm not good at it, and I'm forgetting all the time. And then, with this kind of thinking, we sabotage very much the possibility 
will come back to remind yourself. Believe in your own potential, in your own strength. You are essentially divine. And even if the experience has been a lot that uh, certain things were very difficult, but still I did them, but they were very difficult. The more you relax and believe in your potential, in your strength, in your inner capacity, then the more we can counteract the old habit of making things difficult, of handicapping ourselves, of sabotaging the step ahead, of opening up more and being more expensive and more harmonious. We are in our mind master saboteurs because then we the intent is there and then the mind can easily come, yes, but I know, uh, I'm not good at that. And I had, yes, I know, uh, I've tried many times, but it doesn't really work. And as soon as we start to think and feel like this, then it's like putting again new barriers. Believe in your own strength. Believe in your own potential. Have faith in yourself. You are that divine essence. The role that we are playing is a personality. I'm not that personality. I'm playing it. And through my identification, I have been making myself weak, but it was just an uh, auto-suggestion that we are weak. <laughs> An identification with a limited aspect of ourselves. Remind yourself, you are not that person. That person is just the role you are playing. You are prior to that. You are that which makes the experience possible. You are that source of energy, of consciousness, of love. If we remind ourselves again and again like this, then even if the mind out of old habit wants to come in and stop that we are doing that, sabotage, that we are really opening up, then we can neutralize these attempts of the mind that come there simply by the force of habit. With the thought, yes, yes, that all sounds very nice, but I know already I'm not skilled in that. I'm not good at that. I'm <laughs> I always tried, but uh, it didn't bring much. And like that, all these thoughts, they like cutting us off right in the beginning. So, if you remind yourself of your strength, of your potential, then it helps more and more to neutralize all these negative thoughts that we have accumulated. It's just happening in a situation, in a society that uh, is there now, where there is so much of that. Automatically, we are getting tainted in our experience but we always have the possibility to neutralize those limiting, handicapping factors. What about the unconscious parts of it? Mm. As long as it's unconscious, you cannot do anything about it. But then when we become more observative, then more and more we become unconscious, uh, we become conscious of stuff that used to be unconscious. But as long as it's not conscious, of course, you cannot consciously do anything about it. But the more you are alert, that the more your consciousness is deepening and stuff a lot of stuff that used to be unconscious becomes conscious, and then you can deal with it directly. 
we can deal indirectly with the unconscious stuff, but only when we uh, become aware of its manifestations. <laughs> the unconscious things that are pushing us into something and we see the effect and we can deal consciously with the effect and have there may also often be the feeling oh, that, that something from myself from my subconscious has pushed me feeling like this doing like this reacting like this but as long as it's unconscious we cannot consciously do something about it but you can do as soon as you catch it the effect the manifestation of it and then gradually the unconscious becomes more and more conscious and there you can directly deal with it. <laughs> like a lot of my attitudes are like together somehow how my body is like the, the, the stature of my body, like how I sit and how I, how I breathe and everything and Meditation, it loosens up, but as soon as I stop meditations, I always go back to my old <laughs> like body posture and the same, yeah, and then a lot, a lot of times the same psychological makeups are active in the way too, and it's sometimes I can like correct my body posture consciously, but so so much of this stuff is just like going on <laughs> without any um yeah any control over it right but uh, you already say sometimes you can why why do you why are you able to do so because there you remember to even try as long as you don't remember you can but then when you remember if you consequently do something about it when you remember okay if it helps you then straighten up change your physical posture. But then uh, the, the main thing is that the mental mechanisms that are limiting us. But uh, if it helps by straightening up the body, then by all means, remind yourself, come on, uh, change your posture, stand straight. Uh, and then uh, if it, that helps you to see clearer the mechanisms, then of course, it can be a, sometimes a bit disheartening that we see the same kind of mechanism come up again and again and again. But it has only power because we let it happen without restricting it for a long time. And the habit of doing so has its own momentum, has its own power. But if we start to say, hey, okay, that is the old habit, but I need not function like this. So now I can give a new input, a new creative input. And then when you remember, when you see it there, you may change. You may redirect the attention that the pattern is dissolving, at least for the moment. It will come back again out of habit. But if we keep on consciously dealing with it, then the old habit is simply eventually losing its power, getting neutralized, and the habit of being in touch with, with yourself and alert becomes stronger. Hmm. So don't get disheartened, just remind yourself. <laughs> Not only in meditation, but when you are out of meditation. Yesterday I was watching a movie mm -hmm. and it kind of released something, you know, there, there, there was some kind of sadness that has was released by the movie and that felt very nice. And I, I just realized that a lot of times I'm subconsciously, I carry a little bit of sadness with me around and this, this movie just addressed it in some way so that it released for a while or it became more conscious but and i always think hmm, how could i <laughs> yeah keep keep on having the the more openness that was the end product of it and i didn't know how how i should can do that how you can do that yeah to, to keep to be more open like to have my oh i see to 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 usually like the 
the sadness is some kind of hidden in in the subconscious yeah. and it's just subtly influencing myself through some kind of low self-esteem yes. and some feeling of separateness and but mm. it, it it's it i cannot address it consciously right we, uh, how can we open up we are closing and not opening up because then even if we start to get conscious then we have already all that's that value system in mind this is a good feeling this is not a good feeling this is uh, okay spiritually this is not okay spiritually and as soon as it wants to come up then we cut it down and push it down and it should, i shouldn't feel like that so uh, what helps is to consciously more relax and accept okay all kinds of feeling may come up and then i can let them come up i need not judge them when they come oh they are not good like when you were in the movie you were so absorbed in the movie that you didn't have this defense mechanisms on that it could push through it and open up that that emotion could come up but then usually in our uh, life we have all these defense mechanisms what should happen and what should not happen what kind of emotions is okay and what kind of emotion is not okay and as soon as it's coming up then no no uh, don't want to look there Oop, uh, no good emotion <laughs> No, no, I don't mind having, sometimes I even sit, sometimes I know that I'm sad and mm. I sit down and say to myself, okay, let it come and I, I want to open up. But it, as soon as I, as I sit down on my cushion, it, you it, don't feel sad at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> I get some kind of equanimity and, and I cannot access this, the sadness anymore. But it was there 10 seconds before and then it's, there's no access then, I, or I, I cannot access it consciously. And sometimes it happens if I have another person that I can talk about, but mm -hmm. some, sometimes only. And But it's like, yeah, yeah, I cannot, I mean, I don't mind. Sometimes even I try consciously to, to open up to it, but it doesn't, a lot of times it doesn't work. It, it just like was in the movie accidentally in a way. Yes, right. But... Uh... You don't have to go and run after sadness or emotions like this. But if they come up, then you can accept them and sit with them and learn not to let them pull into self-pity, but uh, become very beautiful and expansive. But you don't have to run after those emotions and think, ah, oh, I have to, Some th there is something there and I have to uh, experience it be here be now at peace as good as you can and then things that need to be looked at and need to be dealt with they come up by themselves okay Would anybody else like to come in? Yeah, I wanted to relate to what you said about um, um, taking our own decisions and that we are um, authorized. <laughs> <laughs> yes. By, <laughs> yeah. By <laughs> law of nature. I give you the permission. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, it's right what you said about how we were brought up, of course. Yes. And uh, in a way, we can't, um, like I see with my grandchildren, I have to tell them no sometimes because they, you know, yes. things can be dangerous. So, yeah. But for me, in my experience, what really gave me a push and opened my senses about do they actually tell me the truth or okay so through the COVID period from the beginning I was suspicious about this whole drama as I am suspicious now 
about the drama that, that they do here in Israel, at least about the uh, heat wave that we have now. People actually say that every summer we have a heat wave. Yeah, it's now it's going to be like maybe 10 days or so with 36 degrees. This is what they, the broadcast is. But okay, but we had so, but the, now because of the communication and I don't know what, I don't want to analyze it, but it's everything is, it has the color of, of making people afraid and like controlling people, controlling the minds of the people. And maybe you can already feel the way I talk that I go a bit. Um, irritated about this and it's in, in everything in in uh, medicine i mean i i always ask the question what she says is it for my benefit what he says the doctor is it for my benefit um and all in all i have trust in doctors and they they have been taking care of me um quite often and good care but still, and science also, the, their hidden interests, which I don't want to know about, really. Good. But but during the COVID, really, I when I realized that I'm not sure, I'm not sure they care about the people. I'm not sure. Um, maybe not. And that really changed my whole um, everything, changed everything. And uh, yeah, I keep saying I can take my own decision, even if it will bring me, it, it will bring a death closer or I'll be very sick or I, I don't know, whatever. I'm not sure they know. Even, even, I'm not sure they know. I mean, they know, they know medicine, they know stuff, but still, there are so many um, more things that are involved, let's say, if we talk about health and the person, like health and, and a specific person. So I just wanted to say that, um, thank you for mentioning that. And uh, for me, it became very more and more, I became more and more brave about taking decisions through, unfortunately, um, those events. Yes. <laughs> right. And everyone who looks a bit will uh, see more and more. After all, there is a very selfish negative intent behind so much stuff that is happening and we don't go now in all the details and a tremendous manipulation of the people how they think how they what they believe what they are doing and the, and the, the direction is more and more control for some and less control for the people but we do have the right to make our own decisions for our own selves in all the fields. If we are ready to face the consequences, if the society dictates a certain thing and our decision is not to their liking, we may face certain consequences, but still we may feel I'm feeling better with myself if I honest with myself and do what I feel is right and not what I'm being told, what I'm being pushed, uh, not what I'm being manipulated into it. Hmm. I don't know whether you still hear me. Your picture is frozen. Are you still there, Fiora? No, you're muted now. 
I did that myself yeah. to put yeah. everybody who comes in. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't know. Have you heard me till I asked you? Are you still there, Leora? No. Okay. Well, I guess somehow <laughs> something didn't want me to tell exactly those things <laughs> that I said. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> Anyhow, you have the right to decide. And even if it's not according to the party line that is being given out, but then we have to take in our strength that we have to sometimes face consequences. But if yeah. we are mm -hmm. if we are still more at ease and peace with ourselves, then it's important that we follow that which we feel is right, that not what we are being told to, what we are being manipulated into. <laughs> yeah, I also thought uh, while the break went on that it, it's not only about, it's also about relationship with people when I really, let's say when I really look into myself and actually ready to be familiar with, with my motivation sometimes, then I I can be so much more sincere and to support the, whatever needs to be supported. Sometimes I see that the motivation is not so for the highest good of all involved. It's maybe selfish or something, yeah, with an agenda, like hidden agenda, which is not so positive um so it goes to to very subtle resolutions altogether this thing about really being sincere and taking my own decisions and uh, really looking into the motivation and yeah as i said relationship with people and everything also easy stuff also more like crucial and uh, yeah complicated yeah and in the end the really really important bit is that we are true to ourselves yeah and then yeah but then it's... also yeah I... okay sorry yeah. but then we can face uh, unpleasant situation and we can accept the things are the way they are and uh, there are forces who try to push us this way and that way and then yeah we can still find our way that we feel, uh, find somehow our way through it, uh, that we feel I'm fine with it. That's okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to say about being true with our, ourselves that it's like, it needs courage to, to really, really be so brave to really, as I said before, um, see the motivation and uh, not only tell myself that I'm true with myself, but like look behind the curtains. Yes. Maybe I would say like that. Needs yeah. courage and needs courage to continue in spite of that. And for that, it's good to what I said in the beginning, <laughs> believe in your own potential. Yeah. Have faith yeah. in your own strength. That's what is very, very much needed right now. <laughs> right. Right. Thank you. Shall we leave it at that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hurry on. Hurry on. Hurry on. <laughs> it is a crazy time now. It is a strange period. There's much more going on than most of the people think. <clears throat> and here, now, it's even more important that we remember our true self is that pure divinity. We are not victims of whatever is going on. It's good to remember our own potential. It's good to have faith in our own strength.
it would need more people, more people, more people <laughs> doing so that things could be changed. It will happen, but most of the people are asleep and happy if they are not being disturbed. It needs courage, like Leora said. And in order to have that courage, it's, we need to remember, no matter what is happening, the essence is pure and divine and cannot be affected by whatever is happening. I wish you all well. Are you? Are you? Are you?